Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this Flutter game development series where we are using Flame Engine to create a 2D top-down space shooter called Space Escape. In the previous video, we added a virtual joystick to this game using which users can control their spaceship. In this video, we are going to add an enemy spawner which will keep spawning enemies from the top. But before we get started with that, let's add some code to make sure that player spaceship does not go outside the screen. So if I go to player.dart file, you can see that in the update method, we change the position of player depending on the move direction. After making that change, we can limit the position to be within the size of screen. But for that, we first need to know the size of screen. This size is known to the main game instance. And whenever there is a change in game size, it gets propagated to each component of the game via on game resize method. One way to get hold of screen size is by adding the hasGameRef mixin to our player component. This way, a reference to the parent game instance will be passed down to this player component whenever it gets added to the game instance. But as we don't need a reference to the whole game instance right now, I'll not use this mixin. Instead, let's create our own mixin which will just expose the game size to any base component that it gets added to. So I'll create a new file under game directory called nosegamesize.dart and in this file let's create a new mixin called nosegamesize which can be added to any base component. This mixin will hold game size in a vector2 field. Let's mark this as late because it will be initialized later. Then next let's create a method called onGameResize which will receive the new game size as input and will store it in the game size. And this completes the definition of this mixin. Now we can go back to player.dart and add this mixin to the player class. Now before we start using the game size from this mixin in player component, we'll have to make sure that our game class calls on resize of this mixin at appropriate places and updates the game size correctly. For this, let's go to the game.dart file. Here we'll have to override two methods. First one is prepare. This method gets called for every component that gets added to the game class. So here, I'll check if given component is of type nose game size. If this is true, we can safely call the onResize method on it. And for the size parameter, we can provide the current screen size using this dot size. This takes care of providing screen size to components at the start. But if the game resizes dynamically, we'll have to update all the components with the new screen size dynamically. For this, we can override the onResize method from base game class. This method gets called every time the application window's size changes. So in this method, I'll first get all the components of type nosegameSize using whereType method on this dot component. Then I'll call the onResize method on each component of this new list using for each. And for size, Again, we can provide this dot size. With this, now all the components with nose game size mixin will get updated with correct game size every time the window resizes. Now let's go back to player.dart and use the game size. So here, in the update method, after changing the player position, we can call the clamp method on this dot position. This method needs min and max vectors to be used as the limits. So in our case, min is vector2.0 and max will be game size. Now let's build and run this to check if it works. And as you can see, it does clamp the spaceship within the screen. But as position of player represents the center, we'll have to modify the min and max vector so that the complete sprite remains inside screen space. And this is simple. We just have to add and subtract half the size of player sprite to min and max vectors respectively. Now you can see that the sprite remains well within the screen. Now let's move on to the main topic of this video, enemies. So an enemy component will be almost similar to player component but without any controller. For this, I'll create a new file under game directory called enemy.dart. This file will contain the enemy class extending from sprite component. And since this is pretty similar to player class, I'll copy the constructor from player class here and rename it to enemy. Next, let's add a double field which will control the speed of this enemy. For now, I'll set it to 250. Later on, we can decide to have different speeds for different type of enemies. Then next, let's override the update method so that we can move the enemies. So here, 
similar to what we did with player i'll write this dot position plus equal to vector 2 of 0 comma 1 times speed times delta t here vector 2 of 0 comma 1 is used to make sure that the enemy always moves along a vector pointing from top to bottom with this much code enemies will move downwards but they'll just keep doing so even when they are out of the screen and we don't want this to happen so to make sure that our game does not waste resources on enemy components that are no longer needed we'll have to remove them once they go off screen and to do this we need to know the screen size in enemy class as well so similar to player class i'll add nose game size mixin to enemy class now in the update method after updating the enemy position I'll check if the y coordinate of enemy is more than the y coordinate of game size. If so, we can call remove method on the current component. This will mark the component to get removed before next iteration of game loop begins. Now let's write some temporary code to test if this works. So in the game.dart file, I'll create and add a new enemy to the game instance. For now, I'll copy all the parameters from player to enemy. And I'll just move the enemy by 100 pixels ahead of player sprite. Also, in the enemy class, let's override the onRemove method so that we can print something in the console to know that the enemy gets removed once it goes out of the screen. Now let's build and test this. And as you saw, as soon as the enemy crosses the bottom edge of screen, we got our message printed in the debug console. This means each enemy will take care of destroying itself once it goes out of the screen. Ok, now let's remove all this temporary code and start working on the enemy spawner. So the basic idea is to have a standalone enemy manager component which can be added to the space escape game instance and this enemy manager will take care of spawning new enemies in the game randomly. For this, I'll again create a new file under game directory called enemymanager.dart. And in this file, we'll have a class called enemy manager extending from base component. Also, let's add the default constructor and call constructor of base class using super. Next, as the enemy manager needs to generate enemies at a fixed interval of time, we can use the timer class from flame engine. So I'll add a timer field in this class and mark it as late. Now in the constructor, let's initialize this timer. If you see the documentation of timer, you'll find that it needs a time limit in seconds, a callback function which will be executed after the timer ends, and a boolean flag to keep the timer repeating. So I'll set the timer limit to 1 second, callback will be a function called spawn enemy, and repeat will be true. Let's define an empty callback function for now called spawn enemy. Next, to start the timer, I'll override onMount method and call timer.start inside it. Similarly, I'll override onRemove method of base component and inside it, I'll call timer.stop. And finally, to make the timer work, I'll override the update method and call timer.update. Now that everything is set, let's start implementing the spawn enemy method. In this method, I'll first create a new enemy. For the input arguments to enemy constructor, I'll again copy code from game.dart. Here, we need a reference to the sprite sheet that we had created in game.dart. So to get a reference to that sprite sheet, I'll add a new field to enemy manager. And since it will not be possible for enemy manager to work without a sprite sheet, I'll add it as a required parameter to the enemy manager's constructor. Then next, for the position of enemy, I would like to generate it at the top of the screen with x coordinates randomly selected between 0 and width of the screen. For this, I'll first add the nose game size mixin to enemy manager. And for random number generation, I'll create a new field called random. So in the spawn enemy method, I'll create a local vector to called position. To generate the x coordinate randomly between 0 and width of screen, I'll write random dot next double times game size dot x. Y coordinate will be 0. So this position can now be used as position property of enemy. Now that we have a new enemy, let's add it to the game world. For this, we can use the addChild method from base component. This is a handy method which adds the given component as child of current component. But it works only if you pass in a reference to parent game or if the current component uses the hasGameRef mixin. So to make this work, 
I'll add the has game ref mix in to enemy manager and we can even specify the exact class name of the game class. In this case, it will be space escape game. Now with this code for generating random position, it is possible that the enemy sprite goes outside the screen. And to avoid this, we'll again have to perform some clamping on the position. As this clamping depends on the current size of enemy component, I'll extract out the size vector into a local variable called initial size. I'm calling this as initial size because in future videos, we'll add some code which will resize all the components if the application window resizes. So similar to what we did in player class, I'll clamp position by adding and subtracting initial size by 2 from min and max vector respectively. Now let's go to the game.dat file. Here in the onload method, after adding the player, I'll create a new enemy manager instance. For the sprite sheet property of enemy manager, I'll specify the sprite sheet object that we created in the first video. And now I'll just add this enemy manager to game class. So let's build and test this in the emulator. Okay, so there are still a few things wrong here because the very first enemy sprite went out of the screen and also all the enemies are facing in wrong direction. So let's fix this. First, I'll go to enemy constructor and set the angle of this component to pi. This will rotate the component by 180 degrees. Then next, in the spawn enemy method of enemy manager, after creating a new enemy, I'll change its anchor to anchor.center. And that is it. Now all the enemies are facing in the correct direction and all of them are within the screen. So this brings us to the end of this video. You can see that now we can easily change the enemy sprite depending on the sprite id that we specify while creating the enemies. In some future video, we'll implement some progression logic which will spawn different types of enemy depending on the progress of player. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this and learned something new. If you did, do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.